Stick two, there's another fault. Um, you know, and I don't want to just bash keto, but I think it's important that people understand, you know, um, in my experience, especially with physique athletes and people that are in calorie deficits pursuing fat loss, um, you know, females don't have as resilient of metabolisms as males. And I think it goes back to hormone profile behind mm. that. But if you're taking carbohydrates away from females for a prolonged period of time, we're starting to see compromises in insulin sensitivity. So you see girls going keto and then having an extremely difficult time reintroducing carbohydrates, let alone calories, right? Which is, hey, you might look good on the keto diet for 12 weeks, but long term on the keto diet, you've completely fucked yourself up. Like that doesn't sound good to me. Um, so there's, there's just a lot of things that I think people need to be aware of when they're undertaking something as extreme as keto. Yeah. And like you mentioned, hormone profile, it's something we mentioned, uh, me and Jim talked about is that some of these people on the influence, uh, side of things, uh, Instagram, whatever, whatever, even on the stage magazines, et cetera, probably are taking some type of hormones, performance enhancing drugs, and then they're backing yes. up these ketos or whatever diet or whatever supplement or whatever results. But the people following these influencers whatever i don't even know what to call these people in 2019 the world's getting weird Sheep. man yeah these know. people well all of it all of it's fucking weird i don't know what i even do for a living but the people that follow these bodybuilders or, or influencers fit spo folk uh they're most likely are not competitive uh, or competitors yeah. and then they may not be on these performance enhancing drugs so these hormones obviously play a role in your metabolism how much muscle you can gain how much muscle you can spare in a diet and they're just not maybe being as honest as they should, saying which ratio of keto and what ratio of PEDs maybe played a role in their success. You know, and we look too at the the population of people who are trying to compete in things, um, you know, aesthetic stuff or strength stuff or, or you know, CrossFit or whatever. But the low hanging fruit of all this are people who are overweight and sedentary. And uh, I think that the, the deal is that some of these people try a keto diet and they drop a bunch of water weight initially. And so they get that sort of, oh, wow, I got, you know, I can actually lose weight, that sort of confidence from it. And then I think that some of, for some of those people, that's kind of where it turns into um, the religion because nothing's ever worked before. And so this is working sure. for them now. And, and they're definitely. Really, like I don't want to, you know, I don't want to sound like a zealot to, you know, when I'm going against all the zealots that I believe exist in the space. But it's like there are definitely applications, and and listen, there are definitely people with sluggish metabolisms that have, uh, you know, insulin sensitivity issues that just naturally don't tolerate carbohydrates well. Where keto might be an application for them to achieve the goals they're trying to achieve. Uh, you know. This this whole conversation could be preceded by another conversation of just understanding what your goals really are. Right. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of people, and like you said, like we're going to do another podcast on performance and health. And a lot of people claim, oh, look at the health benefits of, of keto. Yes, they are out there. They cannot be disputed. But yet you're now saying, well, you know, it's making me healthier. So I'm performing better at CrossFit. Like, no, I'm going to tell you long term, you will not be healthier. Number one, because you're doing CrossFit. But number two, <laughs> because you're fucking not fueling CrossFit with carbohydrates or recovering from them with carbohydrates. So, so while you might see short-term, and there's actually scientific reasons why that works, um, but long-term, it will completely fuck you up. Yeah, and it seems like, um, it seems like people just don't really read and plan around massive changes like that. You know, like nope. uh, changes in diet and changes in 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 exercise and all. There's just like no, no real thought that goes into it, and so there's no plan for not being keto someday, or not, yeah. or you know, reintroducing some some calories at 